What's going on guys, this is Rob, and we are here with Ultimate Spider-Man Venom War, i.e. the story where Miles Morales fights Venom. And the ending of the story is amazing, so I'm really excited to see how you guys respond to this. But what this does is this initially opens up with Miles Morales and his family enjoying dinner together. But when there's a knock on the door and Jefferson Davis, the father of Miles, answers it, reporters come barging in and then asking him whether or not he's like the new Spider-Man, is it true he overpowered Hydra, all that kind of stuff. Now, the reason why they're asking Jefferson and Davis these questions is twofold. The first has to do with a reporter named Betty Brandt, and the second has to do with Jefferson Davis' own history. So, focusing on Betty Brandt here for a second, the way this played out is Betty Brandt being a reporter working at the Daily Bugle, she had uncovered what she believed to be the true identity of the current Spider-Man running around that basically replaced Peter Parker after Peter died in the Ultimate Universe. And she believed that person to be Jefferson Davis. Now, a lot of that was just based on Jefferson's own history, along with her just kind of putting pieces together and maybe cooking the books a little bit. And the reason why I say that is because Jefferson is incredibly accomplished in the sense that there was one point where he was captured by Hydra, he overpowered them and then executed a whole bunch of Hydra soldiers. There was a point where he became a spy for S.H.I.E.L.D. working for Nick Fury and spied on a guy named Turk who was a criminal warlord. So the guys got the kind of chops that you would expect from a person who would be a Spider-Man. But the fact that Miles lives in the same home as Jefferson gave Betty Brant the belief that Jefferson was Spider-Man because while Miles is running out and doing all the Spider-Man stuff, his base of operations is in that general area. So again, it was really more Betty Brant trying to put the pieces together. Now, of course, Jefferson Davis gets eight kinds of pissed off when reporters barge into his house and start asking him questions. And so once he forces all of them out, he ends up leaving, right? He ends up going for a walk. And in that moment, he's immediately set upon by the Venom symbiote who's been hunting for Spider-Man. Now, here's one of the things we need to explain here. The Venom symbiote in the Ultimate Universe is not the same as the Venom symbiote in the main Marvel Universe. In Earth-616 in Marvel Comics, the main Marvel Universe, the Venom symbiote is an alien that was created by a guy called Null. In the Ultimate Universe, the Venom symbiote is actually a bio suit. It was an attempt to create a kind of healing suit that could basically heal any body from virtually any injuries they sustain. The grand idea was to use it for military applications, bond it to soldiers, send them into the field, that kind of a thing. But as time progressed and when you had the original War of the Symbiotes, with Eddie Brock Jr. being the original host for Venom, that initially it was believed the Venom suit was destroyed. Now little bits of the Venom suit survived and it's been taken by different people over the years. In this instance, the version of Venom that we see here is actually owned and operated by Roxxon Industries, but we'll talk about them here in a second. The important takeaway from this is that when the Venom suit shows up, of course, Miles Morales responds exactly the way that you would expect him to. Now, one of the things that I want to specify here is that Miles is still figuring out how to be Spider-Man. And the reason why this matters is because with Venom going after Jefferson and Miles responding, if this was Peter Parker, he would have lured Venom to a location where there were no bystanders, there were no innocents. Instead, Miles is fighting out of desperation, the desire to keep his father safe and to keep different civilians around here protected. But that lack of experience comes to bear in the sense that he's almost immediately overwhelmed by Venom. And the fight is amazing. I mean, he, ab dude, Venom absolutely pummels this guy. When it comes to Spider-Man facing off against villains, right? Peter Parker, or really any Spider-Man, just kind of jokes and does all kinds of little cracky things and so on and so forth. But through it all, Peter very rarely ever loses the upper hand, right? Miles Morales ain't that way. And so while Miles is getting thrown around like a rag doll, I mean, just getting absolutely crushed by Venom, that in turn, like these cops show up and start opening fire. So then Venom turns his attention to the cops and starts to help them finish with all of their living. Now, of course, Miles jumps in, <laughs> Miles jumps in and starts attacking the Venom symbiote yet again. Now, one of the things that I will give Miles here, right? I got to give Miles credit for this. This kid's fighting with every ounce of strength that he has and he's doing his best, right? I don't mean to discredit him and be like, Miles, you are a trash Spider-Man. He's doing his best. Now, one of the things that I also want to point out here is that Miles is aware of Venom to a degree. And it's only because of the fact that he saw YouTube videos where Spider-Man, where Peter Parker Spider-Man had fought Venom. So that's the only reason why he's even aware of the idea of like Venom's weaknesses. But what he ends up doing is using his Venom Blast on Venom. And when that happens, literally the Venom symbiote just kind of succumbs to it and just sort of explodes. Not really like blowing up all over the place, but it kind of scrambles the nature of the symbiote and ends up sending the, the symbiote running. And so following that, Jefferson Davis is taken to the hospital. Now what follows next is morally questionable at best. 
and just downright diabolical at worst. But we'll talk about that here in a second. What we actually end up doing here is Miles gets information because one of the things to remember is that Miles has never actually faced off against Venom and he doesn't even know why Venom's coming after him in the first place or why he even went after Jefferson Davis. And so what you end up having is Miles and his friend Genki meeting with Gwen Stacy and Mary Jane Watson. Now, these two are incredibly important in relation to this part of the story. And the reason why is because Gwen Stacy was caught up in the original War of the Symbiotes. And when I say that, I mean, she was basically killed by the original Eddie Brock Jr. Venom, right? The original host for the Venom Symbiote. And she was in fact absorbed into it, which was kind of a crazy thing because as this conversation unfolds, what they say here is that Venom has a deep rooted DNA genetic connection to the Parker bloodline. Now, the reason for this is because of the fact that the Venom Symbiote was in one part created by Peter Parker's dad in the Ultimate Universe. He was one half of the creation team that led to Venom coming into existence. And so what she says is it was originally created from Peter's father's DNA. And it had literally stalked and hunted Peter once he or Venom or it, whatever you want to call it, realized who Peter was. Now with Peter gone, it may just be looking for you because like him, you became Spider-Man. So whatever was special about Peter Parker genetically, you might have the same thing. And so the reason why this matters is that with like Betty Brant dead and Peter Parker dead, no one really knows why the Venom symbiote is doing what it's doing right now. It feeds on energy and life force. So the best estimation we can get is that it's just kind of driven by a desire to absorb whoever Spider-Man is and then expand its own abilities based on the powers of that Spider-Man. But having said that, when I mentioned that what happened next was just morally questionable at best and just diabolical at worst, the Venom symbiote breaks into a hospital. It literally attacks a hospital. Who does that, man? Right, you guys remember that scene from The Punisher when Frank Castle rolled into the hospital and was just shooting the place up in the TV show? It's like that, man. It's just some villainous stuff, right? I mean, you literally have people on gurneys, the symbiotes attacking them, right? Folks who are just like in the middle of surgery or bleeding out, right? Or like paralyzed or something like that. I mean, it's a slaughterhouse, man. And it keeps talking about how like, give me Spider-Man and I will let all of you leave with your lives, right? I will let all of you guys survive. It's diabolical, dude. It's pretty messed up. <laughs> but here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. So once Miles shows up here, right? Miles has learned from his fight with the Venom symbiote. And that's one of the things that made Miles' story so cool is because as the reader, much like what we saw with Ultimate Spider-Man Peter Parker, you saw him learn how to become Spider-Man as he was operating as Spider-Man. And that's one of the reasons why as soon as he shows back up here, he immediately starts using his Venom Blast on Venom. But lest we forget, while Miles has adapted and learned with his Venom Blast and his first fight with, uh, with Venom, so has the symbiote. And so instead of allowing Miles to stay in close proximity to him for any measure of time, he just starts throwing him around because he realizes that even with Miles being Spider-Man and having enhanced speed and reflexes and so on and so forth, the most effective thing he can do is to shut Miles down as fast as humanly possible, to literally overpower him, to hammer him so hard that he's completely overwhelmed and exhausted within minutes. And that's exactly what happens. I mean, this Venom symbiote comes in and it's just like, like, round two, son, ding, ding, blah, and like literally takes it to him, man. He beats his ass like he owes him money. And then as soon as that happens, he immediately absorbs Miles. And it's the smartest move for the Venom symbiote to do here. It's the smartest thing he could have possibly done. Now, while this whole thing's watching, Miles' mom is freaking out, right? She's literally watching her son being eaten by like a giant monster. But one of the big moments that came out of this story, right? One of the biggest things that come out of the story is this is when we learn that Miles' mom knew he was Spider-Man and we didn't know beforehand. Not that I'm aware of, right? As far as I'm aware, before this moment, we never knew that Miles' mom knew that he was Spider-Man. But once she realized that that was the case, she starts begging the Venom symbiote, please let my son go. And the symbiote's just like, your family has caused me a lot of trouble. You have no idea what I've done to get here and seemingly he's gonna consume her too. But what Miles does is as he's trapped inside the Venom symbiote, he literally unloads this massive Venom blast. And it's just this really, really amazing moment because when that happens, we end up finding out the current host of the Venom symbiote is a guy named Marcus. Now we'll learn more about him here in a second because his motivation is really, really cool. But the other thing that ends up happening here, and this was a huge moment when this happened in the comic, is that Rio, the mother of Miles, is caught in the crossfire with the 
the cops and she's mortally injured. She's literally killed by the police officers and everything starts going nuts after that because what we end up doing is we switch over to Roxxon Industries. Now, while reports are coming out, right, the news is reporting on everything that's going on about the whole Venom symbiote and everything with a guy named Marcus and so on, it is inevitable that Marcus is going to be traced back to Roxxon because Marcus was an employee of Roxxon. And in fact, that's what they say, right? They like the news says we're still waiting for official word from Roxxon as to what they know about this man and how this has all come to pass. Was Marcus's violent mutation some sort of experiment or an accident gone wrong? Now, the reality here is that if Roxxon doesn't get out in front of this before things snowball too fast, conspiracy theories and everything will take hold. And so the head of Roxxon, right, the man himself, he says, you'll inform the media that the Roxxon Corporation is working with authorities in all capacities so that this terrible tragedy can be put behind us. But what we're actually doing here is making sure that no one can connect what happened tonight to what's happening here. What we are doing is waiting until this all blows over and then we will find out exactly what this Marcus was doing with the symbiote in the first place. What we're going to do is wait until no one is watching us. And when I give the word, I want to find out how Spider-Man became Spider-Man and why we can't figure out how to make a Spider-Man for ourselves. And so that's the big thing here is because Roxxon basically got their hands on a sample of the Venom symbiote following the defeat and death of Eddie Brock Jr. And so Roxxon has been using the symbiote, experimenting on it, and trying to find a way to create their own version of Spider-Man. Now, presumably what Roxxon would do is they would kill Miles Morales Spider-Man and replace him with their own. And that version of Spider-Man would be beholden to Roxxon. But for Miles himself, when he wakes up the next morning and the reality hits him that his mom is dead, he immediately freaks out. And in feeling the same kind of pain that Peter felt, in losing Uncle Ben, he quits, right? He's like, I'm done. He gives up being Spider-Man, tears the suit apart, and wants to have nothing to do with it anymore. But with that being said, guys, we're gonna bring this to an end. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all later. Peace.